Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to explore a few cooking methods from specific global cuisines. The question is, have the boys ever seen them before and are they impressed? We've been around the block a few times, Evers. We know it all. We'll lift the cloche on number one. Mm. Steak. Steak. This is a prime cut of quality beef. And what we're looking at is batuta. Ever heard of it? Batuta. No. Batuta. Batuta. Does it help? <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Can I work out if it's just, it's going to be actually pronounced pronounce in a certain way? Batuta. Batuta. Is, I'm guessing because there's a knife here, is it down to a carving method? So batuta, when translated into English, kind of means to beat. Oh, okay. Or to hit. And it's from the north of Italy, and it's a process of chopping raw beef to end up with something we might be more familiar with as a French tartare. So it is always hand cut rather than minced or processed by machine. We're not cooking it, we're not nope. heating this. I've just been really ill. And I'm, I, this, this, this is the second meal I've had. You might go home. <laughs> it's in Sunday. Batuting on the way. I know. So the reason you don't want to process it by machine is you don't want to overwork it. But with a sharp knife, you do want to just slice it. Once you've got slices on the board, you can start to batuta it, so beat it. So with a knife, hack at it. And we've seen this done with sometimes multiple knives. So you've literally got like two hands chopping with two knives, but you want to chop it up into really small pieces. So like her, almost batuta. now, you've got to run it through. Now, all of a sudden, it reminds me of which Sri Lankan dish? Uh, roti. Ro <laughs> Kotu roti. Yeah. And the sound of that beating that you can hear from miles away. Well, this is kind of doing that. Happy it's pretty even? Uh, it's yeah. okay. In which case, you're going to add it into a mixing bowl and season it with salt, pepper, olive oil, and you stir it all together with a clove of garlic squeezed on the end of a fork. Just enough to give it a little garlic scent without it being too garlicky. So like rubbing the inside of a bowl with garlic. Ah, oh, it is glistening. And we glistening. don't crush the garlic, it's just simply... It's kind of bruised a little bit and poked and it's just enough to give it a garlic nuance. And then the final thing, just before you serve it, a squeeze of lemon juice, but you don't want it to sit in the lemon juice too long or else it actually starts to denature those proteins. You wouldn't want it to cook at all, would you? You don't want to make ceviche. Nice, perfect, a perfect portion. Dress it with lamb's lettuce. Depending on the time of year, you could also dress this with truffles. You think about the uh, white truffles you find from places like Alba in Piedmont. Very, very traditional, but otherwise super, super simple. Look at that. Look at you. Right, boys. We've got a bit of palm yeah, on the yeah, top, yeah. haven't we? Oh, oh no, what, what is this? What's this cheese again? Grana Padado. So simple, nowhere to hide. Wow, you need that's quality, good. quality wow, beef. Brilliant. What things I've got to look out for then when buying the brother of meat for this? From a source that you trust, to know that it's fresh and it's been well sourced and well looked after, and then keep it cold until you need it. You need it really cold to do that preparation, and then don't leave it out for half an hour before people eat it. Like you want to eat it pretty instantly, moments after adding that lemon juice. But imagine that with you know some of the North Italian wines, both white and red, with a dish like this. It would be exceptional. Battuta, that's such a good dish. That slight nuance of garlic, even from just that single clove, to mix it on the fork, that's a nice touch. Lovely start. start. Lovely start. Are we going to do some cooking in a minute? I've got another global cooking technique for you. Would you like to see it? Bring it. Do you genuinely think you're going to win this? Yeah, I genuinely do. Bring your A game. This is our home ground. You're on a way turf now. I don't think I'll sabotage James. I won't have to. I've won the last couple of battles with him involved and it must hurt. We've been on this journey for 14 years and you haven't got better. You haven't got better. You still cook the same stuff. Um, we've got like, energy. Yeah, we've got energy, we've got vibes, we can finish each other's sentences. Yeah. We, so hopefully we'll be able to finish each other's um, <clears throat> dessert. dessert. A lot of people assume that uh, me and James don't get on because, you know, I'm the new pretender, but I love it when he's here, just because there's, you know, 
someone else to do the washing up. This is like WWE and boxing, fused with cooking and made really, really simple. <laughs> <laughs> I win, yep. you shave your whole beard off. I was going to say I'm feeling quite nervous. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> I have to win. That escalated. <laughs> number two, where are we going from around the world now? Can you say number two in the dialect or language of this country? I mean, I could, but... Oh. Number two, where in the world are we going now? There you go. We have vinegar, sherry vinegar, bay leaf. Is that bay leaf? Yeah. Bay leaf, some thyme, star some anise star anise thyme. cloves, and smoke paprika? What is the cooking method we're talking about? I don't know, Evers. He doesn't know. The smoke he doesn't know. Pulling me towards you don't Spain. Know. You don't know. As is the sherry vinegar, I would hope. This is a Spanish method of cooking. We're talking about escabeche. Ah, 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 ah. It's over fish. Um, it's like a spicy fish. Often over an oily fish, something like mackerel or sardines. It's a method of cooking called escabeche. Oh. Now it looks Spanish. Yes. Now we're yes, 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 yes. Look at that. So essentially, you make a hot marinade or a hot dressing of vinegar. So in a pan, you soften down onion, garlic, things like bay leaves, some hard herbs, you add in a bunch of spices, and then an awful lot of vinegar. And that hot vinegared liquid gets poured over the fish. Now the fish, some cases is raw, some cases has already been uh, pan fried, sometimes it's flour dusted and pan fried first, but essentially it's the hot vinegar that goes over it that cooks, marinates and cures the fish all in one. And then it's served hours, days later, cold. It looks like a lot of vinegar in there. It is, and you don't eat it out of the dish. You would now take the fish out onto a plate and serve that with salad and bread. Take filling out. Or a little bit of... Yeah. Nice. Bit yeah. Of okay, so skin on and everything. Ooh. Surprised as well, that's cooked the whole way through, isn't it? That's really tasty. Isn't it lovely? It doesn't taste too... What's this, a mackerel? Mackerel. It doesn't taste too mackerel for me. Typically, it's done with oily fish, although you can get... Ooh, so uh, smoky. ...meaty or vegetable escabeche as well. The escabeche is the form of sort of curing it in hot vinegar that partially cooks it too. The vinegar, the smokiness, almost tastes sweet. Yeah, yeah. Like fruit, like yeah. a fruity taste. Like candied. Yeah. So there's every chance that the caramelization of the onion, sometimes they have a little bit of honey or molasses mm. in. I don't know if this one did. I also assumed, because it's vinegar based, they'd be punching my face off. Yeah. But actually, even the sauce itself is really subtle. And, I, and that does come from a quality mm. vinegar. But when you say sweet and with the vinegar sour, the whole dish, escabeche, kind of has stems and origins from a dish called al sikbaj which was Persian. And it was actually a meat dish that was in a sweet molasses and vinegar dish. As it moved across the Mediterranean and arrived in kind of Spanish areas and onto places like Portugal, they applied the same methods of al sikbaj Then the Spanish traveled and took it to places like Peru, and they added in lime and Peruvian chilies, and you ended up with ceviche. And what I find most fascinating is the dish continued to Jewish communities in Northern Europe where they battered the fish and then vinegared it, which is why we still have vinegar in our fish and chip no, shops. In the no UK. way, that is not the reason. It is. It started as a Persian dish, became Spanish, and from there traveled up. And even the fish and chips that we have now, battered always with malt vinegar, stems from this. Love it. Love, I love that. It. I didn't think I'd love it and I love it, I love it. I could do that at home really easily. So easily. We could have done both of these dishes. The idea of it is quite daunting. I think you need, need the right ratios, don't you, yeah. to feel like, you because it's absolutely about how the flavours balance. But I mean, that's the reason we did the recipe about 10 years ago on the channel, was because once you've heated up some spices and vinegar and poured it over fish, that's job done. It's impressive, mm. but it's just one that, again, we're not 
as familiar with in the UK. It is also a form of preservation. Sometimes it can then be days old before it's being eaten because it's kind of half preserved, still chilled in the fridge in that liquid. Two things that I think actually will make at home. Especially if you've got access to mm. really fresh oily fish and if you're not comfortable doing the filleting that somebody else is going to cut all those bones out for you. Would you like another one? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, we're loving it, Evers. Thank you. Right, interested to see if this one is new to you. Lift the cloche. A giant mound of... <coughs> Please tell me we're cooking this one. <laughs> what like is it. that? You might need to get your fingers involved. It's a lot of hubba looks... bubba. No, uh, no, what are you doing? That looks like chicken fat. Oh no, it's intestine. No. No. Not quite, but it's sometimes... Oh, what are you holding? Can you smell that? It's called cool fat, sometimes known as lace. Fat. This particular one is from a sheep, but you can also get it from a pig or calf. I don't want to touch it anymore. You've touched it enough. It's a membrane yeah. that goes on the outside of digestive organs, so intestines and down. So for the moment, we're going to focus in on French cuisine. You may have heard it cooked in a dish like crepinettes, which is like a flat sausage, but also it can be used at very high-end cooking to trap in delicious food. That's what we're going to do. So what you were playing with before was the cool fat before it had been entirely washed. What you do is wash it and rinse it in lots of cold water. You can add a bit of lemon juice or vinegar to really sort of clean it and then dry it. What you've now got is some prepared stuff. What you're going to do is take the piece of very lean, high quality lamb, so cannon of lamb, season it up, place on top some of the mousse, and this is a uh, herby mousse, and then you wrap the whole thing in cool fat. So years ago, I worked in a French pub kitchen with Jean-Christophe Novelli, and this was one of the classic dishes. What it does is extend a very expensive cut of meat by doubling it in size, by adding basically a, a cheap a chicken off cut, but chicken, egg white, and herby mousse. And basically, you could get away with serving a relatively small piece of lamb as a relatively large protein on the plate. This is mad. Like, yeah. yeah just oh, you, like... put, you put a little herb underneath? Oh, yeah. Because essentially, it's see-through. It's like that. stained glass. Is, what's this, tarragon? Yep. Lovely. And then basically you can tuck it underneath. It's very a little terrible. twisty, twisty, and then just sit it down on itself. And you can imagine if you're doing this at home for a dinner party of four or in a restaurant, you might be doing a dozen portions, and those can now be cooked to order, and it keeps it wonderful and dainty. And what you've essentially done is double the portion size of expensive lamb protein with the chicken mousse. I can't wait to try it. Yeah. Because it feels it feels beyond me. In all honesty, I, I'm, I'm fascinated to try it because I'm sure it tastes great. Okay, that does okay, really right. cool. Um, how long is that cooked for? 20 minutes or so and plenty of resting, but you want a little bit of colour. The mousse needs to cook through, but you don't want to overcook the lamb. It's like edible cling film. Yeah. The way, even the way it sticks to itself as you wrap it round again and then it goes completely transparent. Wow. That lamb is beautiful. That mousse! Oh, Kush has cooked that, hasn't he? Wow! It? Okay, that's cool. I can see, I can see, I can see what it's doing there. That's really smart. There's no other way you could do that, is there? It does look classic fine dining, doesn't it? Proper old school, but also a, a true celebration of nose to tail cooking mm. because you're using every part of the animal, including something that was protecting the inner offal. That's excellent. The flavour for the lamb and that mousse is sensational. The lining, you know, it's there, but it almost it almost tastes salty. Yeah, and it kind of pings back. Yeah, it's, it's, like chick, it's like it's like any skin. Yeah, almost sausage skin like, yeah, but exactly even yeah, yeah, yeah. Skin, even yeah. finer than that yeah. because yeah. of like, that lacy yeah. fat. And we also use it in British cuisine in things like faggots. In France, they use it for crepinettes, which are small flattened sausages that would be wrapped in this way. That way, you can extend cheaper cuts and leaner cuts with a little bit of cool fat. What's crepinette? Crepinets? What are they? Crepinettes, crepinettes are long, flat, minced meat sausages. So okay. we're not dissimilar to a British faggot, which is round and like a meat ball. This is a game where like cooking is an art form. Not in a million years am I going to make that at home. Never. I'm glad it exists. Self-basting and absolutely delicious. Have you got room for one more? Oh, yes. 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 Last one. See if you can guess where we're going from the clues under the cloche. What? Chilli, spring onion, ginger. And that looks very... Sauce, saucepan and a ladle. 
The ladle is more key. The aromats in the ladle might point you in a direction. I'm gonna go on a limb. Chinese hot pot. You're half right with Chinese. Specifically Cantonese. Is it like when you put, like you pour over a hot oil over the fish and aromats? And stuff? Absolutely. So steamed fish that is finished with really, really, really hot oil ladled over aromats. So we're talking ginger, that? green Wait, onions, and things like cilantro sure. and coriander. So the clues under the cloche were a little cryptic. Essentially, the aromats would be over the steamed fish, and then often at the table, in front of diners or your guests, you would finish with the really hot, pretty much a, like smoking point oil, and it's just enough to release all the aromats of the fresh stuff and ensures that the dish is served hot. Mm, Do you want to try fantastic. it? Yeah. Yes, please. And that's kind of how it's presented. So in this case, we've got a bass, but it's a delicate fish that's been steamed, and then all the aromats are thrown on top. Ginger, green onions, a little bit of chilli, and a lot of fresh green herbs, typically coriander. That oil is about 230 degrees Celsius, and you lay it all from one side to the other, it will all sizzle beautifully, and then it's good to go. There we go, let's go. It's hot! That is really hot. Wow. And all of a sudden, the room is so aromatic. Oh, okay, now it smells, you're right. That has released everything. Oh, it's so gingery. Right, that is so what? fresh and fiery. What's a centerpiece? So it's steamed pretty plain, just seasoned, and then it's finished with soy and rice wine, and then obviously you've added the oil, which is the fat element, going all over those aromats. And then you let everyone dig in. Mm. Oh, what a what, mm. wow. Oh, steamed fish is the best. Wow. That was just a vegetable oil. Sometimes it is done with a peanut oil, perhaps more traditionally. Oh, yeah. I've got a quote here from uh, Chef Brandon Jew who says, the flavour of steamed fish in Cantonese cuisine is all about the essential flavour of a fresh ingredient combined with a pure, smooth sweetness and that final lashing of hot oil infuses the green onions and ginger into the flesh of the fish and enriches the soy. And it is that harmony oh, of yeah. all of that coming together that makes it so special. Thought to have originated in the Guangdong region of China and essentially absolutely delicious. You can vary the aromats and obviously the fish, but it is its simplicity and theatre of the table, that hot oil being ladled over that finishes it off. For something so oily, mm. the freshness that runs throughout is really light. Any final thoughts? It's one of the best things I've eaten for a while, yeah, actually. Yeah. So exciting as a dish. And as a technique, yeah, a bit of theatre, worth it. Italy, Spain, France and China. Any favourites today? This one. Although the first two, like mega achievable. This as a dish, I think is my favourite. The, the techniques of just simply patooting your meat is the way forward. Comment down below, have you batuted your meat? Or have you used oh, any no. of the other cooking techniques oh, yourself? No. <laughs> and we'd love to hear of other ones we may not have tried. Comment down below. Oh no.